All right, County Marshal. Good morning, Judge Hall. All right. Well, and it looks like we're going to pass this case to uh, January the 27th. Uh, Your Honor, I have some motions that I filed. Let me do this one second, uh, okay. Ms. Marshall, and then we'll take up all your motions. Okay. On January the 27th, we're going to have a competency hearing, uh, and we need to be prepared to go forward on January 27th. And uh, so that's what's... The 27th? Yes, 2-7. Now, in, in a past... Uh, hearing, uh, Ms. Marshall, you had talked about the possibility of you uh, being evaluated by a psychologist of your choice or something such as that. Yes, I have several other issues that I want to discuss too. But I want yes, to I I do this one first. Okay, yes, I did speak about getting a psychologist on my own because I, for one thing, I've never had any psychological problems. And that's fine, but have you done because it? Because I was stomped by the police, I'm I now being made to see a psychologist. I don't have any mental uh, history of any mental problems until March of this year when I was told to see a psychologist by this court. And I also want to make it, uh, no, I haven't found a, found a psychologist yet. Okay. I'm looking for one. Right. But as you know, I have filed with the United Nations and I filed with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights regarding this town and regarding the Louisville Metro Police and this court. So I have to look very carefully for a psychologist that cannot be influenced by this town. All uh, of those town. parties. So, uh, and I also want to state that I did not agree to go to see Dr. Smedley, which was stated in this court the last time I was here, I think by you. Uh, if I did, I misstated and it. And I, I did not agree to go to her, and I looked at the September 26, 2013 video, and this was your statement to me. You said, first of all, you need to understand that this is what you, has to happen. I'm going to pass this case to October 16, and here's what's going to happen, and this is very important for you to understand that if you do not contact Dr. Smedley, and I mean sit down and talk to her as soon as possible, I will have no other choice but to put you in jail. If you do not talk with Dr. Smedley, I will put you in jail. Yeah, you so I did agree not agree to I never said that you did agree. Smedley. I don't know that I That's ever said you September agree. Matter of fact, I, told, I said that if you don't do it, you know, there are consequences for that. I, I'm sure I said that. But I don't believe I ever said that you agreed to talk to her. So I don't know. Uh, the last time we were in court, yes, you did say mm, that. And uh, that's I have not the video. Exactly. That's fine. And also, I filed the second notice to terminate public defender Alexander Wayan, as he has shown on at least four occasions that he is not acting in my best interest. And I would like to be heard out on this. Uh, I state that I requested a copy of the psychological evaluation, and I was refused a copy by Mr. Wayan. Uh, on October the 16th, even though you told him to give me a copy. Number two. Ms. Marshall, do you believe that Mr. Wayan has a copy of that? Uh, may, I, may I finish? No, I want to. I want to take these one at a time. Okay. You know, do you believe that Mr. Wayan has uh, these documents that you say that he's refused to give you? He just told me you? today, though you told him, and I'm going to number two. Though you told him on November the seventh, after telling him on October 16th to get a copy, you told him again on November okay. the seventh. Does to get he a have copy, a copy? And does... he said today he does not have it. Okay, so he, you're accusing him of not giving you something that he doesn't have. He argued with you about not wanting to give me a copy, and he's and my attorney. Any attorney would want his client to have a copy of this psychological evaluation. And, and we're past that. And he, then he the, other, the, other, the, the other statement that I want to make is on November the 7th, police officer Brandon Hogan was subpoenaed to come to this court, and he was not here. I did not hear anything about that from my so-called attorney, and you did not he's say an anything attorney, about man. that. Uh, I have the subpoena. I found out about it after court. Brandon Hogan, the police officer who has not shown up for court, I've been coming to court since 2012. Not one police officer has shown up for court to, uh, to charge me with anything. And I've just been not, coming back and forth. That's not true, Ms. Marshall. I have personally witnessed uh, the police officers here I heard on you state at that least that one occasion. There, though, though, and I stated on that videotape that that's not the police officer on either one of my cases. The police officer that you said was here, uh -huh. that was sitting over there, was not on my cases. None of the police officers have been here from that June 24th uh, stomping that I took from them. I'm not prepared to accept that as a fact because I'm telling you, Ms. Marshall, I personally saw a police officer, and there was really one time in the many times that we've been here, that police officer and that police was officer was case. standing over there. He's he wasn't sitting over there. 
They weren't on my case. Okay. I have the videos. The videos show who's in the oh, court. I've list I watched all the videos last night right. over again. Okay. It's like fifteen of them. I know. We've been, I've been here, here a long fifteen time. times. I know. It's my sixteenth time. I know. And I also filed and nobody's been here. I filed I've been here. I Mr. Filed, Nemi's I'm been here. I'm talking about the other side. Nobody's been here. Mr. Nemi's the other side. I've been, you know Mr. Nemi? No, I'm talking about the witness for the prosecution uh, that was the subpoenaed. The police officer. That was subpoenaed. Uh -huh. Did not show up. Therefore, a motion to hold police officer Brandon Hogan in contempt of court and to dismiss this case with prejudice as the witnesses have never appeared for the prosecution, even when subpoenaed. I filed that also. What do you got to say about that one, Mr. Nemi, this motion to dismiss and hold the police officer in contempt number, and so forth? A number of these appearances that she's listed in her motion uh, were not set for any type of hearing other than to deal with these competency issues and that sort of thing. Every time the officers have been subpoenaed, they have either been present or have contacted our office and said they were on call if needed to testify. And again, Mr. Nemi is wrong. I have uh, made a spreadsheet here on this on this sheet. Did you file and it your tells spreadsheet? Exactly, it tells exactly what each court date, what happened on each court date. Did you file June, that with the court? It's filed in the court state. It is. It is. I'll okay, stand. and I would like to present this as evidence. Okay, uh, but you have put it. You have filed it. Have you filed it it's with the court? It's filed in the court. They have a copy. You have a copy, a copy of this, of Mr. Nemi? You have right. a copy also. Okay, your motion to hold the police in contempt is overruled. Your motion to Every dismiss motion is, overruled. is overruled. So well, I'm you know, we're, um, we are, we're of a different mind as to what, May I read my fourth case. motion to dismiss One second, this? I'm not, uh, one okay. second. You know, there, I'm not real sure, Ms. Marshall, uh, that you uh, really understand the process and where we are. I know that you believe that you have suffered at the hands of the police officer. And uh, the court. Well, I don't know that. Because I, I haven't had a speedy trial, which uh -huh. should have been done in six months according to the speedy trial rule. See, that's a, there is no speedy trial rule. According to the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution, it is applied to the states via the 14th Amendment. It does not say six months in the Constitution. Uh, yes, it does. It says really? within six months. Okay, I need you to give done. me, I don't know what Constitution you're looking the at. The right to a speedy trial is guaranteed by the Sixth Amendment to the that's U.S. Constitution as applied to that the is states true. via the 14th Amendment. Klopner versus North Carolina, All 385 U.S. 213, 1967. Okay. Barker versus Wingo set out some consideration analyzing speedy trial claims. Length of delay, reason for delay, assertion of the right, and prejudice. 407 U.S. 514, 1972. And I'm going to give the dates that I have been to this court and what happened because he said we came for the for a mental incompetent uh, hearing. That's not true. And he hasn't been here every time. We've not, we're not been, we've never speaking. been here for a hearing. We're uh, going to have a hearing on the 27th 20, of. May I tell, give the times that I've been here and what no, it's for? No, it's a, it's a record. We he have gave that. his, his no, side. No, he did not. He did not list he these. He just said, he, you just gave your side, didn't you? Just a moment okay. ago. You What's your next here? motion, Ms. Marshall? Uh, I just wanted to read the 15 times I've been here. This is my 16th okay, I, time. And I'm prepared to accept that as a fact and that the filing that you have been there on May every... May I read the reason? Because no, he lied. No, he did not lie. Now, what's your next he, motion? This man lied, Your okay. Honor. Okay, well... The, I have all the videos. Okay, and uh, hang on a second. So he lied about how many times you've been to court? He lied about what we were in hang court on. for. Did he lie about how many times you've been to court? He, li he no. lied about what we were in court for. Okay. He said several times he didn't give the number. All right. Do you have another motion? Your motion for uh, to dismiss based on a speedy trial. My fourth motion is to dismiss, dismiss this case with prejudice because the delay of a speedy trial has violated my constitutional rights. I've been here 15th time. This is my 16th time. Uh, the police officer was no police officer has never shown. That up. motion is overruled. The I need to know your next motion. I need to know your next motion. Okay, the next one I want to bring up is this psychologist. Uh, and I. What do, is your motion? What's your complaint? I don't want you to give me a I big speech. I tried to read my motions. I wasn't allowed okay. to. No, that's not exactly true. So you have a problem with the psychiatrist. I don't want to hear what your problem is. I want to know how it affects the process of this case. I just, I was trying to read that. I wasn't allowed okay. to well, read it. No, that's not true. What is it? But I need to know what your motion is. Do you have a motion? Yes, I have three. What is the motion? I have three here. I need to know the first one. Let's go okay. on one by one. Fourth <laughs> motion to dismiss this case with prejudice because the delay of a speedy trial has been Now, that motion is overruled. Ms. Marshall, that motion is overruled. I'm okay. ready for the next one. Motion to hold police officer Brandon Hogan. I can't elaborate on any of them, right? No, and I've overruled that one as well. Okay. I can't elaborate. He can elaborate, but I can't. 
Well, Second I, I, notice to terminate public defender Alexander Wayan, as he has shown on at least four occasions that he is not acting in my best interest. As I stated, twice he was supposed to get a copy of the psychological evaluation. He refused. He argued with you. He's my attorney. He should be overjoyed okay. to give me a copy. Uh, also, right. We've been when, through this uh, one as well, Ms. Marshall. Tony, if I may, I believe you have a copy of it right there. I, that, this is the copy I got from the court, yes. and the last time we were in the court, but the, the, the a judge told you to get a copy in its entirety. Okay, hang on for a second, uh, he, Mr. Wayne. Mr. Wayne, hang on. Ms. Marshall, Ms. Marshall, I need you to hang on for a second. Ms. Hang on. Okay. I need to ask Mr. Wine a question. Okay. Mr. Wine, do you believe that you are able to uh, represent Ms. Marshall? I would like to, Judge. I'm not sure, but I'd like to. The point is, is there enough of a community, of the ability to communicate with Mar Ms. Marshall? And she is showing sort of a, you know, sort of a Mr. lack Marshall of faith in you. Has indicated an unwillingness to work with me, but I'd still like the chance to work with her. All right. Now, Ms. Marshall, you're going to need a lawyer. No matter, how, you're going to have to have a lawyer. I will look for a lawyer on my own. He hasn't done anything he was supposed to do. He was supposed okay. to get the psychological Okay, evaluation. we're going to move on, Ms. You Marshall. You told him to. He I didn't know. get it. I know. You told him twice, two court okay. dates. He refused. Uh, do you have another motion, Ms. Uh, Marshall? No, that's it. All right. But I do not want to work with him. He's not doing what he's supposed to do. Um, Mr. Wine, you're going to have to go back and talk, uh, talk to your superiors and tell them of this circumstance. And uh, <coughs> Judge, I don't, as far as another public defender being appointed. Well, or tell them we got this dilemma. And I don't qualify because I'm a homeowner. And you said that on one of the court true. dates. I'm not supposed to have a public defender anyway. Well, but you're going to need a lawyer. And what, what I may do is this. I'm going to say you're going to, you're going to need a lawyer. Either you find a lawyer of your own. <coughs> Or I'm going to appoint the public defender, but it may cost you, you know, a thousand dollars for the public defender to represent you. I don't qualify for public defender. You do if you pay a thousand dollars. I don't have a thousand dollars. Well, you, it's one. It's you, be, we're, you cannot proceed with without a lawyer. It's just not going to work, Miss Marshall. Uh, Your Honor, may I say something? One second, because Miss Marshall, we have the same sort of issues. We're having communication problems, me and you. I'm trying to, you know, we, we, you make the same motions to dismiss based on the same information at all of our court appearances. Now, you have some new ones today, but we spend our time arguing as opposed to communicating, which may be part of what you have going on with Mr. Wyan here. Mr. Wyan's a fine young attorney, and he can help you. Uh, if you refuse his help, uh, I guess there's nothing much I can do about that except to tell you that... Um, your prospects of prevailing, winning in this case, go down if you do not have a trained lawyer to help you. Mr. Wyan is, uh, said to me uh, about the psychologist, I'm not mentally incompetent, have never been in mentally incompetent. He says to me, this is the type of attorney that representation he's going to give me. Uh, Ms. Marshall, she said you're incompetent. We can plead mentally incompetent, and then we can get the case dismissed. I'm not pleading mentally incompetent. I'm not okay. pleading guilty. I, I, and I'm I don't believe it is. I think that's a communication issue. And part of what Mr. Wine is telling you is what the what. It, really? I'm not sure you're paying attention, Ms. Marshall, because I don't know if it's you know, I'm 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 getting a little discouraged just because we're not communicating. Uh, you refuse to believe anything except what you want to believe. I'm, I'm believing. So I need you to hang on for a second. I have a belief that Mr. Wine told you this. This is the evaluation. This is what the evaluation says. If we're prepared to accept the evaluation, you cannot be held responsible for what they say is a crime. We can probably win that way. I'm not guilty, and I'm not okay. pleading guilty. I'm not taking a plea, and, and I'm you're not, not pleading guilty. And you're, not, you're not accepting this is a finding of incompetence. Okay, I'm telling you on the 27th of January, we're going to have a competency hearing. I'm going, to, I'm going to let you all, I'm not removing Mr. Uh, Wine. Mr. Wine, you're going to need to take, talk to your superiors and tell them of where we are. Get them a copy of the tape. Sure. What? Sure. It's our office policy that once someone's been appointed a public defender, they act for the public defender. I got you. But, okay, I understand that part. What and have I'm you not, done in this case? Hang on, hang on. Nothing. Hang on. Ms. Marshall, hang on. Okay. Well, you're not letting them help do it. But anyway, it goes like this. Okay. Person can't pick and choose a public defender, but that we may need an assigned counsel. We, you tell them, you tell the superiors what the dilemma is. All right. I will speak with my boss about this case. That is excellent, and we'll figure it out. Otherwise, you can hire a lawyer, Mr. Marshall, if you can. Mr. Nemi, is something on your mind? Uh, the only thing is, is if uh, we've kind of been down this road before, where she had a public defender and then hired 
by the council and then got dissatisfied with that one. Uh, I don't think that was the case. It, well, she started with a private lawyer and then she represented herself and then I... Uh, I, I would only say that uh, if it's, we're set for a hearing in January, uh -huh. now if, if she comes in with a private lawyer that's going to represent her, that's fine. Uh -huh. If she doesn't, I still think that the public defender, even if he doesn't act as her counsel, should be present to advise her during that hearing of legal matters that might come up. Well, I'm not removing the public defender. Thank you. I'm telling Mr. Wine, well, I think you need to talk to your superiors, tell them of our circumstance here. Ask so I'm being made to have a public defender when I don't qualify for one because I'm a homeowner, which you stated on one of the court hearings well, I had probably to give you times. Take. Probably several also, times. Also, on two occasions, you told him to get the psychological evaluation once in its entirety, once to get the psychological evaluation when he first came back. He didn't do it. He argued with you about it. I'm his client. He should have been overjoyed to get it for me. Then the police officer did not show up for court. He didn't tell me about it. To this date, he hasn't told me about it. The police officer was subpoenaed, and he still hasn't told me about it. He could have found a motion to hold him in contempt of court it's, and I have to use him? Judge, it's my understanding that once a competency motion has been filed, Officer Stevens has stayed in the Correct. case. That's right. I can actually file any motions during this time period and do nothing besides okay. address the competency. Here's what I want you to do. You Here's haven't it. done that either. All right, hang on, Ms. Marshall. <coughs> Ms. Marshall. All right. Uh, we all understand that Ms. Marshall is very frustrated by this entire process and she believes that she has been mistreated by the police department and that she's I committed have. no crimes. Ms. Marshall, if you just stop. Here I am, I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get, to, get everybody to understand where we are, and you want to argue with me telling the story that you want told, right? It, That's a, this okay. lady went to the FBI with me, and we turned in the emails I received where the police called me niggers, slaves, told me they're going to kill me and my daughter if I don't plead guilty. What happened? So, yes, I'm upset. What happened? What happened to that? It's uh, Carl and Hobbs out I'm here. I'm not worried about the FBI. that. So the FBI. Also went to the, you have uh, an FBI agent in the audience? They, the reports went to the FBI. And but you've not gotten any feedback from the agent. I have a case number from the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Understand. Okay, let's get back to this. All right, so uh, Ms. Mar Marshall is very frustrated about this entire process. She believes that uh, through, uh, she was been mistreated by the police, falsely arrested, committed no crimes. She's very frustrated. What I need for you to do, Mr. Wyan, is to uh, talk to Dr. Smedley. Say, so Dr. Smedley, here's what we want. If there is any instrument, right, a test that was given to Ms. Marshall that required her to write down anything, you want a copy of the rough, whatever it is, right? Because I have no idea. I think I, in one of our hearings I talked to Ms. Marshall and there were questions that were multiple choice or something <laughs> such as that. Or if Dr. Smedley recorded these, right, we want to know exactly the question that was asked, exactly the answers that were given on each and every question that... Uh, Will the court order Dr. Smelly to turn that information over? Yeah, to get me an order and I'll do that. Okay. Why don't you call her up and tell her that I want her to give that to her, to you, right? And entirety. if she's got a problem, hang in on. In its entirety. In its entirety. And if, she, and if, you know, so I want any kind of... Notes. Paperwork. Tapes. Now, notes I'm not sure we can get, but... Yes, uh, we can. Well, we I'm going to have to... You're gonna, we're going to ask Mr. Wyan, a trained professional, to, to look into the fact that whether we're, Ms. Marshall would be entitled to the notes that the doctor took, if she took such notes. We don't know that they exist, but they may exist. Well, Judge, I think a court order might. Okay, might. bring me a court order. I need a lawyer to prepare an order. Here you go. What we're going to do here, Ms. Marshall, is we're going to put Mr. Wine to work, and soon you're going to appreciate what a fine young lawyer he is. We'll see you on the 27th. You want to hire a new lawyer, fine. You want to get a, uh, uh, hire a psychologist, fine. Uh, we're going to see you on the 27th, and we'll find out where we're at and uh, move forward, but you need to get prepared. This is a very important day in the process of this case. I'm prepared today, and Dr. Smith right. was supposed to be here today. Where is she today? Uh, she was not, and we'll see you on the 27th, and she's supposed to be here on the 27th. You can write it down. January 27th, Dr. Smith is supposed to be here. On the tape, it says she's supposed to have been here today. I, I don't know uh, how you got that. Uh, I'm disputing that, and uh, we will see you on the 27th. All right. Uh, Jeffrey McQueen.